have you always liked to take a peek in our craft studio? Keep watching! Hello, my name is Tina. I'm head of design of Victoria Designs and in this video I'm going to take you on a tour in my craft studio. I was postponing this video because I wanted it to be perfect before I showed you. But I made peace with the fact that it will never be perfect, it's just perfect for now. Don't expect a glamorous new sparkling craft room, it's more about make do and mend and I'm sure a lot of you can relate. And to celebrate getting 10,000 subscribers to our channel I added a free principle to organize your craft room. Just click on the link in the description opt in and you can start printing and organizing. Quickly before we start, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel and you like paper crafting like I do so much, you're more than welcome to hit that subscribe button. And now let me take you on the tour. Let's start with this side. This wall unit is actually built with old pieces of IKEA shelving units. They used to be called Expedit, but now they're called Calex. I gathered these pieces from various owners and I just tetris them all together into one affordable wall unit. I needed extra desk space and IKEA has a really cheap desk add-on for the Calex units, so getting that one was a no-brainer. I was so glad that it was white because then it could be a perfect backdrop for photo shoots, etc. But being so cheap, the surface scratches really quickly. Bummer. Let me show you this side a bit more in detail. There's an old spice rack mounted to the side of the unit and a spray painted it silver. I think my parents had it as a wedding gift 40 years ago. This rack holds all my tapes, so washi tapes, fabric tapes, etc. There's no more space left, so no more buying tapes. Right. This is just a basket where I hold a few chargers that I need on a daily basis. This phone holder I'm very excited about. You just mount it on a desk or a wall or a window and it's secured very good. It costs at about $2 in a dollar store type store and you can fold it out any way you like. And this is how I fill my intros. I just put my phone in here and I fill myself and at the end of the video you can see the backdrop where I'm sitting. Right now I'm still filming with my iPhone SE. One day I will film with a super fabulous camera but for now this is great. In this basket I keep some fabrics that I use from time to time. I have more fabrics, but these are the ones that I use more regular. Being a paper crafting company, we don't really need a lot. It's more used like an embellishment. To stack these, I cut some foam board the size of the basket and I wrap the fabric around. This way I can easily store the fabrics and have a good view of what I have. This cabinet holds some crafting magazines and books. It's so full I need to discard some. It may sound weird, but I'm a firm believer of not having too much stuff. Although as a crafter, that is not easy at all. In this cabinet I have all my silhouette cameo items, I still have the silhouette cameo too. In the magazine holder I keep vinyl and sticker paper for when I like to make stickers. Back there I have my mats, some transfer tape and some tools. This way I have everything together that belongs together. These four boxes are a tip from the YouTube channel At Home with Nikki. As many crafters do I'm tackling more than one project at the same time and when you keep those projects out on your desk it can get quite messy. The idea is to put each craft project in a separate project box. If you want to work on a project just get the box out and put it back when you're done. No more clutter. Down here is my sewing machine which I use more for sewing paper than for sewing fabric. Next to the sewing machine is my laptop case that holds extra keyboards and other computer related items. Below the desk there are two containers for scraps. The upper one holds scrap papers and the bottom one holds cardboard like cut up cereal boxes. I grab stuff out of there quite frequently and I really advise every crafter to have a scrap box. At least one. I used to have a big cardboard box as my paper recycling bin on the floor but it always stood in the way. And now this container that fits the unit is where I keep the paper for recycling. When I'm crafting I can pull it out and put it next to my desk and I can just sweep paper pieces in there. Afterwards I can simply put it away and there's no bin in sight. In this cabinet I have some more old IKEA boxes. This brand isn't available anymore but they have new ones that look like this. In this one I have some 6x6 paper pads. I just took a look and I have more than I thought. Yes! This box holds drawing stuff like crayons and color pencils. And this box holds Victoria Designs postcards. It is a modified design from an item in our shop and we had them print at some point. In this cubicle two of my larger tools live. First of all my Big Shot and also my newest purchase, the Crocodile Big Bite. 
I can't wait to start to use this tool. It's so handy to make holes and set eyelets up to six inches from the edge of some paper or a journal. So, big shot and big bite next to each other. In this cabinet I store my printing paper. On top I have the normal 80 grams printing paper. I put the book underneath because the rack is quite old and bendy. Under there there's a stack of discarded paper that I use for trial prints. This is my 300 grams paper, my 120 grams and my favorite of all the 160 grams paper. This is the weight that I use most of all. And on the side I store different weights of craft paper. Down here I have two sets of three containers. Here's the glue, the paint and the varnish. Especially the glue I like to keep in an airtight container for the smell. Some old paints in here and some varnishes. And this is more of the fabric department. These are mainly ribbons and cords. It's, it's a mess. Someday I will organize these super beautiful and practical and when I do I will show you how. The second box holds sewing materials like thread and sewing machine needles. The bottom box holds lace and trimmings. This is vertical storage that I love to share. I made this insert with foam board pieces that are held together not with glue but with merely sewing pins. The last part holds my cutting mats. The big one does bend so I turn it from time to time. Here's where I store a quite large rotary cutter. This part holds my bookbinding press that my dad made for me, also a small scoring board and a small guillotine cutter. Next to the insert I store my Martha Stewart scoring board and my Fiskars trimmer. Under the Calyx desk I put a Helmer drawer unit also from Ikea. It used to hold paperwork from my separate classes when I was a teacher, but since I stopped teaching a few months ago now I'm filling them with craft supplies. Here's where I keep my hardware, and by hardware I mean mainly metals, like these label holders, book corners, closures, hinges. I also keep my magnets here. These are, <laughs> these are so strong, even wrapped in bubble wrap, I can hardly pull them off the side of the drawer. So a lot of things that is or looks like metal I keep in here. In this drawer I keep my brads. This tackle box is filled with lots of colors and sizes of normal brads, I really love these small brass ones. Behind there I keep more larger brads and I also keep a bunch of eyelets here, soon to be used by the crocodile. Here's where I keep wooden items, little clothes bags, garden sticks, popsicle sticks and more. In the bottom drawer I keep my journaling research items. Let's take a look at that part of the room. In the corner here I have some really old corkboards. I emptied them because the information on there is rather private. The upper corkboard is my personal board and the big one below is for Craftingly and Factoria designs. They were given to me by separate people and they didn't match at all but I painted the frames in the same color to make them match better. I also whitewashed the cork a bit to make them lighter. On top of these corkboards I have a framed quote that I made for a shop and it says the best way to get something done is to begin. I myself I am a master procrastinator so that's why that's up there. On my personal board I left one picture to show you. It is a photo from 20 years ago, I was 20 years old I think and I just conquered a mountain. It wasn't a really difficult or high mountain but still I felt so free up there and I like to remind myself to strive to be as free as possible. I know this tape on there and I cut into the picture. This was a picture from the pre-digital photo era but I don't care. That photo means a lot to me. And some needles live there too. On the large core board I mainly keep info that I need to access quickly like inches millimeter conversion charts and also paperweight conversion charts. Here's a desk that I work on most of the time. It is a standing desk so I put it up and down and up and down all day long. Sitting all day is just not healthy. Obviously that's my computer. I don't want to be a Mac snob but I guess I am. I just don't want anything else anymore. This is a high resolution Dell monitor and underneath I have a few hard drives. Let me show you this. This is a power strip. The top is a design of Victoria Designs. We made it in collaboration with Egg Electronics. You can put your plugs in here in any direction you want. If you can puzzle a bit you can fit up to 15 electronic devices in here and there are also two USB ports. And if you don't like the top anymore you can switch it out for another design. We designed two tops. This is my favorite and this is Joachim's favorite. Sadly these were a limited edition so they're not available anymore. This one's made for European plugs but I think they're working on a version for the US also. 
Next to my computer desk is the world famous Alex drawer unit from IKEA. And above there, let me talk to you about these clocks. Why on earth do I have two clocks? The bottom one is my time, and the upper clock is Joachim's time. Joachim, or J, that's easier to pronounce. My bestie and my business partner is a digital nomad. He's always traveling all over the world. Right now he's in Tokyo. Before that he was in Thailand, Singapore and Vietnam. Next thing he might travel to the US and the week after he might be in Portugal. We work together via internet every day and to keep up how late it is where he is, I have the second clock. On top of the Alex unit is our newest printer, the Canon TS8250 and it fits snugly up there. Let me show you what's in the drawers. The upper one says ink. In there is almost all ink related items, printer ink, ink pads, blending tool thingies and blending tools. Except the ink sprays, they're too tall to fit in this drawer. The second drawer has some markers, hole enforcement rings. This box holds items for sanding. This is not sandpaper, it's actually something to literally sand the hair of your body. Please don't do that. It irritates your skin beyond reason. I just kept it for sanding crafts. It's like a very fine grit sandpaper. This drawer holds my punches. I don't have a lot of punches and to be honest, these speciality ones I barely use. These are the ones I always use circles 2 inch 1 and a half inch 1 inch 5 eighth of an inch a corner punch and the corner and notch punch very basic punches because try to cut the circle neatly i can't the next drawer has some wax paper for when i have to dry gluey crafts a seal stamp and wax and some larger tape this drawer is higher, so here I store my higher items like ink sprays and acrylic paints that I use quite often. Here are glues and Mod Podge that hasn't been opened yet because my glue container is full. This container holds stamps and here is where I store my double-sided tape. In the bottom three drawers I keep my jewelry making stuff. In a previous life I made jewelry like ear cuffs and sold them on Etsy. A lot of these materials and tools still come in handy from time to time when crafting. Next to the Alex unit there's another desk. It's an old table that I bought for $30 and I painted it. Let me show you what's on the wall next to this desk. Mounted on the wall are a few kitchen rails from Ikea with lots of containers. This this is also discontinued, which is a shame because it's the best craft storage solution ever. You can quickly grab tools that you need and quickly put them back. I have some markers in here, pencil and pencil stuff like erasers, pens. Here's where I store the Fabri-Tac. I keep it upside down so the glue is already at the nozzle when I need it. Some other glues. This one's empty for now. All sorts of tools like craft knives. My favorite tool, the spatula and my bone folder. Some rulers and small scissors, pencils, watercolor pencils, post-it notes, all sorts of brushes, hand punches, files and a screwdriver. That one's empty and some pliers. On a hook in the wall I have my rulers. The ones that don't have a hole in them I attach to a small binder clip to hang them. On the desk there's another printer and this is our old printer. I still keep it for trying out crafts because I still have a lot of ink left for this one and I don't want to waste it. Some paper towels in reach and here's some random desk stuff. Calculator, business cards, a prick mat, some hand cream for when I'm filming tutorials and you see my hands all the time. I forgot the bottom rail on the wall. It holds mainly scissors on hooks and some other tools. Fabric scissors, a brayer, my scissors for icky stuff, my good scissors, a glue gun and a heat gun. They're all within reach. And this is where you see me film my tutorials. I don't have a special filming underground. I do have a sturdy placement where I put self-adhesive contact paper on. The contact paper has a wood design and I have a whole roll left. When it gets too gross, I simply put another layer on top. I told you I'm still filming with my iPhone, so the benefit is a phone is very light. I don't need weird contraptions for filming overhead. This is just a lightweight tripod. I weighted it down with a dumbbell for counterbalance. On the tripod I mounted a monopod. On the monopod I mounted a phone holder from a selfie stick. And that's what I use to film my tutorials. Under my table is where I store my lights. I love my lights, but I regret not buying small LED ones. And last but not least, this is where you see me sitting in my intros. There's a piano because I have to put it somewhere. But I made it a bit more pretty with some plants. On the wall I put some hooks and I hung clipboards on them. 
And recently I added a metal rack to attach some crafting printables we made. On the shelf above, some albums that I received from a customer and one from a design team member. I love these two pieces and I didn't even expect to get them. It was a total and lovely surprise in the mail. On this dish rack are some journals and crafts that I made in recent videos. These were from the last video. If you want to make these, I'll put the link of that video below. And to end, up there is someone you might recognize from Halloween videos. Mr. Skull. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got some tips and tricks here and there to implement in your craft studio. And vice versa, if you have some tips for me or the other viewers, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to share it on your social media or your other crafty friends. And I wish you a truly beautiful day. Have fun everyone. Bye.